God in worship. God, who never turns to us. And now, if you will join me in reading the UCC mission statement, united in spirit and inspired by God's grace, we welcome all, love all, and seek justice for all.
service theme for today. All I had to do was look around the house. Here we go, Fred. You're right. From the Gospel of Boo, Boo Kitty and Maybelline. I watched. They're new to each other. They're trying to find their boundaries. How close I can get to you without you trying to scratch me. What area is my area? What area is your area? Who eats first? Who waits? And when he waits, he sits next to the bowl. He has to supervise the other cat every bite. And I'm watching this. But as I'm watching and reflecting on one bread, one body this week, I take a look and all of a sudden, they're together as one. And they're scattered around the house, here and there, darting and together, working together as one in their movement and their grace, like they were dancing together. So what is it? It was a bug. <laughs> a bug. All of a sudden, their differences were gone. They could care less. They had one purpose. They worked together as one. It was wonderful. Oh my goodness. And for half an hour, they were, they loved each other without reservation and without fear. But they had a common purpose. They had a common purpose. It reminded me when I served a church in Pensacola. There was a hurricane in Tuscaloosa, and it came through, really destroyed the town. Our community, oh my heavens, the community came together. Our church had a huge warehouse. That was a blessing. For some reason, it became the center of northern Pensacola, where people would bring things, clothes and food and water. People were showing up with U-Haul trucks and vans to carry the stuff up there to help people. They had a common purpose. For some reason, there were Catholics and Protestants and Jewish people and, and atheists and everybody came together again. My favorite was the one that actually drove through the parking lot, wouldn't stop, but just kind of handed me a bag out the window and says, I really, you know, here, like to help out. But didn't feel comfortable enough to stop and stay. They might get caught being in the wrong church. <laughs> oh my heavens. So we all growing on our paths. But I love that image. The, the important part is that he came. He followed his heart. He became one with the community. As hard and difficult as he fought it, and we do that often too. One bread. One body. What this table invites us to do is to be open to not living that way only in time of crisis or when there's something distracts us enough or has to distract us to work together, to live together, to love one another as one bread and one body, to embrace our differences. Be grateful for them. But what do the scriptures mean? How can we be one person? One person. We heard from the scripture lesson this morning, didn't we? 5,000 people came together. 5,000 people. And the women and the children. So imagine, there was probably 10,000, 12,000 people came together. And what I love is think about the diversity in those 12,000 people. People came from all over. They came from different lands. They came from different cultures. They came and some spoke different languages. They had different customs and beliefs and, and values. Different faith experiences. They were different races. All these differences, they came together as one body. 
Jesus fed them all, didn't he? Without hesitation. He didn't need a hurricane to happen or a bug in the corner to happen to love. He loved from the God that was within him. That's his invitation to us. And when we think about it, it just makes much more sense now when Jesus at the Passover meal shared with the disciples that supper and why he said, remember me. Because often we forget him. Because we do get distracted. But he said, do this often too. He knew us. Do this and remember me. I love, love, love this story. Because the disciples, they're scared too. And they're like, okay, Jesus, you're done. Your sermon's over. Send them home, send them to town to, you know, go to Wendy's and all the different restaurants, get their supper. But he said, no, you have the power within you. The power exists right here. We don't need to send them away, he says. He says, pass me what we do have. Isn't that important for us? We need to take a look inside. What do we have? We have the power of God's love within us. It's so powerful. When we say yes, looking and searching when it's been there all along. Reminds me of somebody's sparkly shoes. <laughs> Dorothy, you had it with you all along. Our goal isn't to become one with the divine. Our goal and our invitation is to say yes to the divine within us. It's already there. It's part of who we are. Part of who we were created to be. There's nothing we need to look for. God's not lost. Five thousand. Huh? Let's say twelve thousand for the rest of us. I think that's more of a better number. But how do we get lost so often? We get distracted. Because Do with the, the things that we allow to influence us. We allow that. We need to say yes. Because God is with us and walks with us and lives and breathes through us. In the story from Paul in 1 Corinthians, it says, I love the title in this rendition. It says, it's 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 34. Because the title says, Abuses at the Lord's Supper. Like, abuses. And we hear Paul's words, he says, Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you. Because when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. He says, he's giving them some strict instruction, isn't he? He's upset with what's happened to the church in Corinth. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it's not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper. And one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What you do not have, what do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. 
when I started reading this, I thought about this in the context of he's speaking to the church. You know, he's upset. He sees factions. He sees divisions. Wait a minute. We have 40,000 Christian denominations around the world today. Not churches, denominations. What have we done to the one bread, one body? I used to think. And then I prayed and prayed and said, God said, these are different expressions of who I am. I might not agree with some of the theology going on, but I'm called and invited when we partake of this meal that we're all one. And that's the power of God's love. I'm invited to get out of myself into love. That's the invitation of this table. But when I read this, I thought about it's the context of Paul speaking to the church. But what about Look at this in a different way. Individually, how does this text speak to us? Read it like he was talking to you or talking to me. I hear that you have divisions. So what is it within myself that I'm allowing to divide Create this distance, this feeling of distance between God and myself. I hear there are divisions. And he says, and to some extent, I believe it. It appears real. There's so many factions among you. If you could only be genuine. When you come together to eat the Lord's Supper, how can you do so when someone else is hungry? Do you show contempt for God when you do so? And so many have nothing. This morning I stopped at Whole Foods because I knew that they would have bread like this. I love walking through the bakery department because you see the different expressions. So I'm at the checkout counter and the lady says, well, a high carb day, huh? <laughs> No, ma'am, it's for communion. Oh, for church, yes. It's the bread that we'll be using on the community table today. And then the guy who's bagging too, he starts listening. He goes, I said, but in what I love about this, it's the different textures and different cultures the different breads come from. And, you know, I see God in this bread. Each loaf is different, created by Him. I feel and I see love in each loaf. And I love that they're different. Wow. And I said, thank you for helping me write the rest of the sermon. <laughs> it really was a wonderful moment. And it is. The love that exists in and through this table is like no other. And Thursday at our service that Sarge leads in the social hall for our Thursday part of our congregation, it was so interesting this way. He's shaking his head because without really being aware of the service theme for today, he starts his sermon for the people who come. And it's about one bread, one body.
You know, I'm sitting there in awe how God is expressing God's self through the words coming out of Sarge's mouth. And he gets up there and he reads a 23rd Psalm, but he reads a version that's Native American. He reads a version that's from the different religious and different faiths communities. All have a similar Psalm, 23rd Psalm. God, you deliver the word in such wonderful ways. My favorite one, though, is the Native American version of the 23rd Psalm. Or maybe our version is the version of theirs. Okay. The great father above a shepherd chief is. I am his and with him I want not. He throws out to me a rope and the name of the rope is love. And he draws me to where the grass is green and to where the water is not dangerous. How appropriate, especially today. And I eat and I lie down and I'm satisfied. Sometimes my heart is very weak and falls down, but he lifts me up again and draws me into a good road. His name is wonderful. Sometimes it may be very soon, it may be a long, long time from now, he will draw me into a valley. It's dark there, but I'll be afraid not. For it is between those mountains that the shepherd chief will meet me. And the hunger that I have in my heart all through life will be satisfied. He spreads a table before me with all kinds of food. He put his hand upon my head and all the tired is gone. My cup he fills till it runs over. What I tell is true, I lie not. These roads that are way ahead will stay with me through this life. And after, and afterwards I will go live in the big teepee and sit down with the shepherd chief forever. Beautiful. Beautiful. Brings new meaning to one bread, one body. So back to 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, and after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In other words, the Lord lives for each one of us. Every time we partake of that bread, we can live in that lifestyle, not a five-minute process on Sunday morning. Every time we accept the power within us that God instilled within us at birth, breathed into us at birth, He lives. One bread, one body.
to feed all 12,000 people without reservation. We serve a God of invitation, not exclusion. God invites us to love. May we say yes to it.
So anyway, I knew that Reverend, Reverend, well, yes, she's a minister, that Leslie does acupuncture. Now, needles and I are allergic to each other. <laughs> Trust me. But when you get, it's kind of like the bug in the corner. Okay, we're going to come together. We're going to have a meeting. She has a company called Acu on the Go, Acupuncture on the Go. Pastor, I'll meet you in the church in the parlor. Oh, you make it too easy. Okay, you know how we fight things. So we met Friday. One of the most wonderful things, because in the midst of this, I got to know her. surrounds her. It thrives within her because she says yes to it. She spoke with me for about half an hour. <coughs> She's a healer. She said, this is my ministry. That's the stewardship woman. And I believed her because I could feel it. I could witness it right before me. Calm my nerves down. She does her treatment. For the 30 minutes, you're lying on the sofa with probably 20 to 30 little needles sticking out all over. You know there is a God when that can happen. Yes. And then when we got done, it was gone. Pastor, I prayed for you for 30 minutes. You were meditating and while you were healing. She said, I prayed for you. Wow. What a stewardship moment. What if we prayed for one another like that? With belief. With no lack of faith. Pray for the healing already there if we would just say yes to it. That's Leslie's stewardship moment. One bread, one body. Oh, I'm a firm believer in traditional medications, Walgreens and CVS, and I are in a relationship. I love them. I go twice a day. But that one bread, one body, that was a different expression of God. God providing for me in a different way that made me uncomfortable. I thought it didn't want to say yes to it. I tried my ways first. And when I tried His way, it worked. Thank you, Dr. Let's see. Reverend Let's see. Oh. Uh -huh.
experience the love of God are invited. And I think that
leave this house of worship, let us remember that in this world our hands are God's hands. And our feet are God's feet. And our words are God's words. Let us go in peace to both serve and love the Lord. today by God's love and grace while viewing our worship service and we hope to see you in person one day. We at the United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale are an open and affirming church that believes in equality for all. We have many ministries that reach out to the needs of those in our community and there's always something here for everyone to be involved in. We believe that God is still speaking and that our ministry outreach can only continue its vital mission in bringing people to Christ through the support of people just like you. Please visit our website, uccftl.org, for more information about us, to submit a prayer request, or even donate to the church if you have been moved by the Spirit. You will help us in God's work in our ministry outreach. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we hope to see you next week. May God's peace and love be with each and every one of you. And remember, God is still speaking.